22. Back with us on the Sunrise Morning Show is Stephen Howard from In Defense of Christians. Good morning, Stephen. Good morning, Andy. Good to be with you again. It is good to have you back. And IDC just hosted a a press conference recently about the dire situation in Armenia, particularly for Christians. What is the latest there? Well, we know that uh, civilians are being attacked. We we know that churches are being bombed. Uh, French President uh, Emmanuel Macron has uh, even confirmed uh, intelligence uh, indicating that Turkey has transported uh, jihadists from um, from Syria to Azerbaijan. Uh, so it's a, it's an extremely grim situation, and that was really the purpose of the press conference was to highlight uh, the seriousness of what's going on there and call for action. Yeah. Okay. So you mentioned Turkey. What has been Turkey's role in this, and and why do you think they've gotten involved here? Well, Turkey has a very dangerous vision um, for the Middle East. Um, you uh, on your show, we we've talked uh, a few times about the genocide that had been committed uh, against uh, the, the Christian communities of the former Ottoman Empire a century ago, where over three million were killed. The strange thing is, it, it seems that in many ways, Turkish foreign policy today is the continuation of that same genocide. And what I mean is, if you look at all the groups that were killed in that genocide, whether it's the Assyrian, Assyriac, Chaldean Christians uh, that were part of the former Ottoman Empire, we see Turkey persecuting the same Christians in Syria today. Whether it's the Armenians who were killed in that genocide, um, we see that Turkey's targeting them in Artsakh today. Whether it's Greek Christians that were killed in that genocide, we see Turkey targeting them in Cyprus today. We've actually seen the president of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, refer to the Christians that live within Turkey today as quote-unquote remnants of the sword. So this is someone who who not only, it's odd, in some instances when it's politically convenient he denies genocide, and then when it's politically convenient to, to a, a very different audience, he teases it, hmm. uh, and, and when you look at Turkish foreign policy, it, it's basically just a continuation of it. Has the administration attempted to do anything about the situation in Armenia right now? Not in a meaningful way. Um, the Secretary of State did, did issue a statement uh, condemning it. I know he's planning on hosting the foreign ministers of Armenia and Azerbaijan, um, but the honest truth is that um, United States policy toward Turkey has, has been a failure, and that falls on the administration and Congress. And the purpose of the press conference and the purpose of our advocacy is really to call for change. To give an example of, of why the policy has not been working, uh, there was uh, recently an article uh, from Amy Holmes on the Council of Foreign Relations. Uh, a year ago, we saw Turkey invade northeast Syria, and a, a ceasefire um, with the U.S. had been uh, agreed to. And over the last calendar year, uh, Turkey has violated that ceasefire uh, over 800 times. Uh, this includes 138 violations in Tel Tamar, which is a, a, a historically Christian region uh, of northeastern Syria. Um, we even see uh, just, uh, I mean, it, it's just tragic. It, it's, it's a complete tragedy and a failure. We, we saw that sanctions were applied uh, against senior Turkish officials in the midst of that invasion, and they were withdrawn uh, after nine days. Uh, and so the withdrawal of sanctions after nine days, over 800 violations, you have a lot of Christians and, and just a lot of people in general who were displaced, and there was, as part of that, Turkey did commit campaigns of, of, what, of what some would call ethnic cleansing. So um, the policy, it has not worked. So the administration, Congress, they need to go back to the drawing board here, and uh, there needs to be a robust sanctions campaign uh, against Turkey for its, for its actions. Can you explain, possibly, I mean, maybe there isn't a good explanation here, but, I mean, why would the United States essentially be looking the other way when it comes to Turkey's behavior? Historically, there have been reasons why the U.S. and Turkey uh, have needed to work together. Turkey is a NATO country during the Cold War. Uh, Its proximity to the Eastern Bloc was, was a really valuable asset. Uh, the United States you know, military uh, has a presence in Turkey uh, today. 
Um, we also know that uh, Turkey is is home is home and hosting a, a large number, uh, as I can recall, over two million refugees uh, from from Syria uh, and from elsewhere in the Middle East. And so, what it has tended to do is is it's at all been pressured from the West, or if it's on if it's just unhappy with Europe. It will basically weaponize its refugee population, and what it's done before is just opened up its borders with Greece and flooded Greece with refugees. So mm-hmm. it's uh, it's despicable what it's done there. But uh, the truth is, there remains uh, uh, some national security, especially with U.S. forces being there, uh, especially with the, the with the proximity of Turkey, you know, in the Mediterranean uh, to the Middle East. Um, however, we're really calling for a complete reevaluation of the relationship. Um, we're, we're at a point where, you know, look at it, Turkey's transporting jihadists across state lines. Uh, there no longer seems to be a compelling national security interest in working with them. I was going to ask, do we need to, to remove our troops from Turkey? I mean, what else needs to be done in, in the eyes of IDC here? Absolutely, absolutely. So really, they're going to need to look at, and the United States is going to need to look at and explore other options. We know Secretary Pompeo had been, uh, to the eastern Mediterranean a couple weeks ago, uh, had visited Greece. And there have been discussions about trying to move U.S. forces uh, in that part of the world uh, to other countries, uh, po- possibly Greece. So um, that would be uh, an option. But I, I think that what the U.S. is going to need to start uh, looking at doing is finding all ways that it can um, really extract itself um, from, from any leverage that, that, that Turkey would claim to have over, over the United States. Um, that is really going to be crucial. We've been talking to Stephen Howard with In Defense of Christians. And, Stephen, if listeners want to really go in-depth on this issue and check out that press conference you had, how can they find it? Press conference is on our website, and I would also encourage people as well on our website, indefenseofchristians.org. We have a Take Action page, and we have two resolutions on Turkey. You can send messages to your members of Congress. You can tell your members of Congress to, to condemn what Azerbaijan and Turkey are doing to Christians in Artsakh. And you can also send a message to your congressmen to urge Turkey to respect the religious freedom of the ecumenical patriarchate. So again, that's indefenseofchristians.org, and you can click right on the Take Action tab. You can find In Defense of Christians linked at sunrisemorningshow.com as well. Really appreciate the information today, Stephen Howard. We'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. 